farm and ranch families have historically been land rich and cash poor. So we see this landscape and to us, it doesn't always appear as an asset. It is our heart and our soul. Hannah Ranch is seven miles southeast of Fountain, Colorado. Um, the ranch is um, largely short grass prairie, uh, but we do have irrigated hay meadows as well. I think this area is really special. Our school is situated on a prairie where we have mountain biking trails, we have lots of room to get outside, but really close we have mountains and um, a totally different type of ecosystem. There's so many opportunities to get outside and live in the land here. Colorado Springs is just a really, really great place to be outside and to explore and do all of the outdoor activities that you could possibly ever want to do. I think that is maybe the special part of existing here in the shadow of Pikes Peak. So I do think land is something that brings us together. Colorado Springs was the town where people just went to enjoy life. You could get here easily, you could get out of here easily, and there wasn't a lot of smoke belching into the air from any kind of industry. Palmer really just wanted to create a, a beautiful, healthful city that would attract people to it. Uh, and so in that case, it's, it's much different than, than many of the, uh, the Western colonies. The Palmer Foundation initially was the result of concern on the part of the Colorado Springs Community Parks Advisory Board, members of the park staff, who were well aware of the progression of development. There had to be some means of identifying future needs and somehow building some way to drive a uh, budgeted requirement either through council or through partnershiping with nonprofits. Perhaps as much as anything else, uh, parks are the Palmer legacy. His idea for parks was, I think, very forward-thinking, that open space is important to create a healthy population. You allow people to get outside, to enjoy trails, to walk, uh, to get exercise, to get fresh air, and to recover their health. I can't speak broadly to uh, everyone's greatest challenges, but one of the biggest challenges for this particular ranch and this particular landscape is our proximity to the Front Range. We're seven miles south of Fountain and uh, we have, since the early 1950s, felt development pressure. Uh, in the early 1950s, the Hanna family and Hanna Ranch were cut in half by I-25, so our entire history here has been colored by development. We have utility corridors that cross the property. We now have um, solar development that has pressured this region. Um, so we have pressures in this space that I don't know that every ag community uh, interacts with. It's tricky because we just came out of 18 months of drought. I think we are seeing hotter, drier times and weather patterns that are different, which I think is a, a relatively unique and scary challenge that this generation will need to face. Right now, I'm most worried about the lack of immediate action. Like, this is a problem that is already affecting us. We're having one of the hottest summers on record. There's smoke in the air and it feels like nothing is being done about it. The biggest fallacy in this world is that other people will make the change that you want to see. And that's what decision makers need to do. If they want to help the planet, they themselves need to start helping the planet. I think because I was brought up in the West, every time you got to someplace, 
He said, oh my God, that, I hope nothing ever happens to that valley. You enjoy it, even if it's visual. It doesn't have to be material. It doesn't have to always be labor or something like that. It's there. One of the challenges as we look at keeping large working functional ecosystems and landscapes intact is this concept of generational transition um, and making sure that there is an opportunity uh, both to manage an operation in an ecologically and economically viable way but also to leave that operation in a place that the next generation can and will want to be involved. I see myself looking at every little detail that I am able to change about my habits in my life and I would like to reduce the waste that I use and I'd like to just look around me and take in what I can change about just my everyday life. I think what gives me the most hope is seeing people engaging in the outdoors every day. Um, I think for me, that's definitely where I get the most motivation and the most um, passion to care about environmental issues is from spending time outside. So every time I see people who are like going for the first hike they've gone on for years or something like that where they're stepping outside of their comfort zone and getting outside, that really makes me think that people do care and change can happen. Forty-four years ago, Palmer Land Conservancy was founded because of a need and urgency to protect the landscape and natural beauty of Colorado Springs and surrounding areas. Today, Palmer Land Conservancy has protected more than 136,000 acres of land throughout Southern Colorado, including public parks and open spaces, working farms and ranches, and awe-inspiring scenic views. Spanning 19 counties, the impact of this work is seen every day. However, the pressures facing the land today are greater than ever. The land and nature need us to take action to conserve that which we hold most dear. Land, water, wildlife, the beauty of the landscape, and our children's future. Conservation can't wait. As we look back on the visionaries who launched this work more than 40 years ago, let us continue the legacy of conservation for future generations to look back on us. Take action. Save the land today.